Come on, don't we all wish we could sing a little bit like Cheryl? Isn't that just so encouraging? I just want to take a moment to greet everybody watching online. What's up to everybody at West End and, and Missouri City? Hello, River Point. It is so good to be with you this weekend. Happy December. We got one month left before we start the new year. It, it went by so fast, but uh, I'm so glad to be with you this weekend. Um, we have been in a series called Blind Spots, Getting Our Emotions in Focus. If you're sitting next to somebody that has emotional problems, uh, why don't you look at that person and say, me too, because uh, we're all in that. We're all in that boat together. And uh, I believe that this weekend is, is so important. I believe it's going to help you. And um, the goal of today is to equip you not to just help yourself, but also to help others. And I believe that there is some scripture we're going to look at together that I believe is divine, and I believe it, it's going to do a lot uh, for our souls. I want to start with this. Um, uh, it says this uh, in Ephesians. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Then it says this, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Today, I want to speak to you on the subject of in my feelings, in my feelings. Can we pray together? Father, thank you so much for this amazing community of faith. God, I pray that you would help us to be uh, emotionally grounded in you. And Lord, I just pray that there would be an insane amount of peace that we leave with here today. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. I love that in 2018, we have a really great way of expressing our emotions through our phones. Uh, we use our phones now more than ever to express how we feel. And I'm just going to go through a couple of emojis, if you will, that we use often to express our emotions. The first one, first off, this is what I love. I love that uh, Apple figured out that uh, we're all not just one color and they, they made it diverse for River Point, you know what I'm saying? So if you white, black, yellow, or gold today, however you feel, you can express yourself through an emoji. The one that I like to use a, a lot uh, is, is this, this next one here, and it's, it's the fist bump. And this is just me just letting you know I respect what you're doing in life right now, okay? Just simple. I don't got to say much. Just hit you with the fist bump. Uh, one that I often use as well is uh, this one. People be bringing me baby mama drama, and I just be like, I don't know, bro. I don't know. I just, I just hit them with that a lot, okay? I'm not trying to get all in your business, okay? <laughs> then this other one, uh, this one is my brother's favorite, okay? It, it's just cool. Cool. Like one time I told my brother, I said, hey, man, on Monday, I'm trying out for an NBA team. He wrote back, cool. Didn't even give me an L, okay? I deserve an L for this. This is fully cool, not just cool, okay? Then uh, another one that I like to use, you ever got a text message from somebody you wasn't supposed to get a text message from? You know what I'm saying? Uh, man, some, some dude accidentally texts me. Like my number is, is, is a Minnesota number. He meant to text his girlfriend whose number is like one digit off of mine. He texts me the other night at like three in the morning talking about some, I miss you. I'm like, you miss me? Who are you? Okay. <laughs> Hit him with the shifty eyes. Okay. Uh, the, the next emoji that I look, use a lot uh, you have that person that keeps dating the same person over and over again, expecting a different result. You'd be like, you know what? I'm done with you, dude. I'm done. I just hit him with that, okay? Then uh, here is uh, th this emoji says, I know I'm slightly crazy. And if you don't ever use this emoji, it's because you're a lot of crazy, okay? And, not, not, and, and this, this is a self-awareness tool. Uh, another one uh, that we often use way too often, okay? We use this emoji. This is the biggest lie in the world, okay? Because you use this when you're sitting on your couch, not even moving. You're like, <laughs> and you just send it. Like, you're not crying, laughing. You actually have a straight face, okay? And then we've taken it to another level. Now we tell people, I'm dead. You're alive, okay? You're not dead at all, okay? Like, you're not even close to dying, okay? Then um, here is uh, what I use when I got to tell somebody something tough. This is truth and love. This is when you got to tell somebody you need a full-time job, not a part-time, no more side hustle, okay? We ain't doing multi-level. No, no, you need a full-time job, okay? Um, this, this one is uh, what I send to my wife. She be at the mall. She sent me a picture. She, she at the mall trying on a little dressy dress. I, okay, I see. Hey, girl. All right, I send her. Send her an emoji. 
Then I asked her how much it costs. And then I said, it costs how much? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We put this back, okay? Take a picture. I'll come to the mall and take a picture with you, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we ain't got it like that now. Calm down. You done lost your mind. All right, now, then, this is a, when you ask any guy how his day was, this is a day in the life of a man. How was work? It was work. <laughs> how was the gym? I lift it. I mean, it's very just, meh, another day, another dollar. This is the day in the life of a woman, okay? This is her emotional state. You don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. You know, she might get her nails done around 11, and things could just shift drastically, okay? She could be doing fine at 9, 9.45. We had a different ball game, okay? Now, what do we do when we have to express uh, this emoji, when we have to express something like anger? Or what about when we have to um, express when we're just feeling absolutely exhausted and we just need a nap? Uh, what do we do when we have to um, I- express that, you know, I'm just so overwhelmed by my schedule in life right now? Or, or what about this? It's when you feel nothing. It's when you feel so apathetic. And I wonder how many people have arrived here this weekend and you're just numb. You, you, just, you, just don't, you just don't feel anymore. And I think that when we live in our feelings, we run the risk of living out the worst versions of ourselves. And, and here's why. Uh, my dad had a stroke when, he was in, when I was in fifth grade. And it disabled him to the point where he could no longer drive. And so uh, my dad was a great dad, but he wasn't an able dad. And sometimes uh, how my dad would get around the city is he would take um, the city bus to get around to different places. And so often my dad would say, hey, son, I'll be at your game. But what my dad failed to realize is that the city bus stopped running at 6 p.m. And my game was at 8. And so there were times where I would uh, come home after a game and I would find my dad in our basement watching the news, watching the highlights from my game in tears. Because he wanted to be there. He just, he, he, he didn't get on all of the right buses. And, and, and so it doesn't make me bitter at my dad, but it does, when someone tells me that they're going to do something, it makes me take them less at their word. And so if you tell me, hey, we're going to go to the movies on Friday night, I'm going to hold you to that. And if you miss that movie, oh, you don't want to see the Ryan where you bailed on me, man. You broke your word. You better be a man of your word. And when somebody doesn't keep their word with me, it triggers me. And here's what it triggers me to do. It makes me the most independent person in the room. It makes me say, I don't need anybody. I don't need anything. I'm good. Don't worry about me. I got this. And, and that's the worst version of Ryan. You've got your trigger too. There's something that happens to you like me where it sends me back to a basement. And, I, and it might send you back to a dark place or a dark time in your life. But when we are completely swayed by our emotions and triggered by it, like I said last week, it's okay for us to have emotions, but it's not okay for our emotions to have us. And here's what I know. In light of our future hopes and dreams, our feelings are not going to take us there. And, and I think that some of us are waiting for the right feelings. We're waiting to just feel it in our bones for us to get moving and to be the person that we know God has perhaps ordained for us to be. But I don't think you, you should be looking for the right feelings. I think it sometimes comes down to the right choices. And the choice I hope that you make this weekend is the choice to fight. To fight. And, and here's, here's what um, we call him the Apostle Paul. Paul uh, was not a church person at all. In fact, he was a Christian terrorist. He used to kill Christians before the Lord Jesus knocked him off of his horse. And then he, sp- he spread the gospel better than any first century Christian. And we call him the Apostle Paul, because he started so many churches, and he was an overseer of a bunch of churches, and he would write letters to them whenever they were dealing with with a bunch of issues. And, and, And in his letter to the church of Ephesus, this is what he wrote. He started off by saying, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. 
He started off by going, yeah, listen, guys, finally, and he's using the words finally because thus far in this letter, he has talked about a lot of stuff. He has talked about grace. He has talked about relationships, relationships between a husband and a wife, relationships between believers and non-believers, relationships between believers and believers, doctrine. I mean, he is breaking down all of this stuff. And then he goes, but let me save the best for last church of Ephesus. Let me save the best for last River Point. There's something that you have to know, and I'm saving it for the last chapter. And, and then he goes on to say this, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. He's going, hey, finally, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. There is a war going on in your soul. And there is a scheme of the devil trying to knock you out. And I want to prepare you to fight. I want to prepare you to fight. And then he goes on to say this. He says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. In other words, he's going, your fight is not against who you think it is. Some of us believe that our problems are a result of a person and we want to point a finger at them. Paul's going, stop pointing your fingers at each other. It is the devil at work. And you must be aware of that scheme. And it is time for us to fight. I wonder how many of my friends are in the building today or maybe watching this message and you are struggling with anxiety and you are struggling with depression and the devil has stolen your peace. What would you do if I told you you could get it back? But for you to get it back, you're going to have to fight. Paul doesn't just tell us to fight. He tells us how to fight and he, he says, I, I'm, I'm going to give you the quip, but I don't have time to go through the entire armor of God, but I, I want to zoom in on, on two pieces of, of, of this armor. And, and here's, here's what, um, I, what we have to understand, is we have to engage in the right fight. D don't, don't pick your spouse. Realize this is a scheme of the devil. And, and I, want you, I want you to see, see this right here um, in, the, in this next verse. It says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Paul is writing this letter to the church of Ephesus from jail. Okay, he is in prison writing this letter and he is getting to stare at a Roman soldier as he's writing it. So he is writing that with the Roman soldier in mind and the Roman soldier outfit weighed about 70 pounds in ancient Rome. 70 pounds. And the most important part of their entire outfit was the belt. Because the belt actually gave balance to the breastplate and all of the armor and didn't make it as heavy. There were all little like trinkets where they could put arrows and other weapons. Like if you didn't have your belt, you could not go to war. And he references this belt, this thing that a soldier would center all of his weaponry around. He's saying, you've got to center your life around the truth. You got to center your life around the truth. And, and some of us, when we are triggered and we're living in our feelings, we start to believe lies and call it truth. You ever heard somebody start using this term? I've heard this term more this year than ever before. Well, my truth, your truth, what? What is that? What, what do you mean? Your truth, as if there is this other truth. Like it's either true or it's not true. And, and, but what happens is, is when we start to believe lies, it becomes true in our minds. So, for example, people will say, everybody hates me. Everybody don't even think about you that much. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you saying? It's not true. It's not even possible. Like, you've calculated an everybody thing from one altercation? No, dude, that's not true. But it triggered you. And now you're living in your feelings. So now you're mad at everybody at the job. Everybody at the job, I ain't do nothing to you. Why are you mad at me? I just got here, okay? Like... And we make these grand statements about everybody. Every pastor, whoa, 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 whoa. Hi, my name is Ryan. I just met you. Like there's, we, that's what happens when we're living in our feelings. You need to center your life around the actual truth. You're going, I'm a nobody. What do you mean you're a nobody? How did you, how did you come to that conclusion? 
And when you pull back a little bit, you can go, man, I understand that I feel somehow, but we have to pull those emotions into focus. And Paul is encouraging us, if we are going to be in this fight and engage in the right fight, we've got to center ourselves with the truth. Another way for you to know what is true is you start asking yourself, is, are the calculations that I have made about myself and others, does that line up with what God has said about me and others? And, it, and if it doesn't, because you could go, oh, man, I'm a nobody. Or you could go, didn't God say that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made? Is, did, if, I, if I am a product of the most high God, who am I to discourage myself? Because now you have centered your life around the truth. Okay, and, and then it, it says this. And as shoes for your feet. Oh, I, y'all, I paused right there when I read that because I love shoes. I said, okay, they, this man got some shoes. What, what, tell me about the shoes, Jesus. He said, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. The word gospel simply means good news. And I got good news for everybody this weekend. Peace is available to all of us. Now, you got to understand something about the Roman soldier's shoes. Um, he had like these um, knee high combat boots, okay? It sounds girly, but trust me, it, it was lethal, okay? Like think gladiator, okay? So, um, and, and they called them greaves, and, and they, were like, it, they were like metal boots. If they had their, their shoes on properly, it was literally physically impossible to break the leg of a Roman soldier. And, and um, it had two spikes on the bottom. And one spike on the front. Hopefully, I don't fall over up here. Okay, but you get, like, so there, is, there was one spear on the front, two on the bottom, and, and they had two purposes. The spears on the bottom meant that if they were fighting an uphill battle or a downhill battle, they would not be moved. They, 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 they would stand in position so you could be fighting them and they'd be moving, but they, they, they will not be moved. In other words, Paul is saying, hey, I've got good news for you. It's not that the fight will be over. It just means you don't have to be moved by it anymore. In other words, he's going, you, you don't have to be swayed by what you see on the news. The news can be bad, but it doesn't have to move you. And you can be a self-controlled person because you've got the gospel of peace. In other words, there is something on the inside of you that means I can fight a battle and be okay. The only time they pick up their feet is to kick somebody. Now listen, if they kicked you, you're going to die because there's a spear on the front of it, okay? It's going to kick you in the face and it's over, okay? I'm telling you that right now. And he's going, I want you to be ready for the gospel of peace. Some of you need to go to work tomorrow and be ready for the gospel of peace because you work with a Keisha and Keisha get on your nerves and you don't... <laughs> You don't know what to do. Some, some, some of you need to go home, but y'all got in the fight on the way to church. You need to get back in your car ready with the gospel of peace. Because you got to remember, your fight is not with your spouse. Your fight is not with your kids. Your fight is not with your boss. Your fight is with the enemy. And you got to fight. You got to fight. It, 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 it's just... And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And then, this is, this is something else that I, that I want you to see. It, Psalms 119, 165, David is writing, David was a, a king. He, he had seen a lot, and he's going, hey, guys, in a lot of everything that I've seen, this, this is what I know. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them some. Dave, David's looking at this, he's going, he's going, listen, I've seen a lot of people, I've seen a lot of wars, I've seen a lot of fights, and, let me tell you, like, some of the people that have the most peace are people that love your law. Ladies and gentlemen, can I challenge you to do something this holiday season? Can I challenge you with a new, new year's resolution? Would you fall in love with Scripture again? I, I mean, like, fall in love with Scripture, like, like, fall in love with Scripture, like, where you don't know how the story ends. I, I, I mean, get back to the childlike place you went when you first read scripture when you first read the stories 
of Jesus. I, I'm talking about the first time you heard that Jesus fed 5,000, you made sandwiches completely different from that point on. You was like, man, I don't know what could happen today. I'm going to work. This might be crazy. Like, like you took a shower differently when you heard that Jesus walked on water. Next time you went to the pool, you said, I don't know. I might not fall in. Like, you, you don't know, okay? Like, the first time you read that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, the next funeral you went to, you was like, hey, y'all, it might not be over. Wait four days. We could chill for a little bit. Like, like you just thought differently. And then on some level, you just kind of grew up and just kind of went, ah. And it just became old to you. Will you go back to Scripture and just go, Lord, would you speak to me like you did when we first started? And here's what I found. The people that are the most disturbed only find themselves in Scripture every now and then. It's a Sunday thing, man. Maybe once a month I'll kind of crack that thing open and you wonder why you're so disturbed. But a person that is addicted to it, a person that is consumed, they have put something inside of their soul, they put it in their mind, and now it's gotten into their heart. It is very difficult to disturb that person. Why? Because all of a sudden, they, they start hearing things and reading things that are negative, and they just go, you know what? I got great peace. I've got great peace. Man, they're laying people off. Man, they might be, but you know what? I'm just going to trust that God's on my side. Because the Bible is a collection of books and a collection of stories of God continuously showing up for his people. And so you walk away and you go, I'm his people, so if he showed up for them, he's probably going to show up for me. I'm going to be all right. I'm, not, I'm tired of giving the enemy my peace over and over again. He ain't getting it because I'm here to fight. Uh, some of us believe that great peace comes with preferred outcomes. We, we believe, oh, I'll have great peace when I pay off some student loans. I, I, I'm going to have great peace when I pay off my house. I'm going to have great peace when I get a new BMW. I'm going to have great peace when I get married. Ask somebody that's married. I'm going to have great peace. <laughs> I'm going to have great peace when my kids move out of this house, okay? I'm going to have great peace when I get this promotion. But you have to understand, Paul is writing this letter from jail, Telling first century Christians, you can have great peace and it is available to you even if your circumstances are not ideal. And here's what I believe. I believe great peace is knowing that God is with you regardless of the outcomes. Because I believe that Paul could write what he wrote because his Savior met him in the cell. and said, Jesus is with me here. I'm good. That's all I need. I don't know if I'll get this dream job. I don't know if I'll get this dream girl. I don't know if I'll get this dream car. I don't know if my life will turn into the American dream. But I do know that great peace is available to me right where I am. Because I've invited Jesus to be a part of it. I love, I love what Paul said to another church in Philippi. He said, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I, I want to teach you a little something today. I want you to see this. The original Greek word for there for keep is phoreo, kind of like for real, but phoreo, okay? Um, <laughs> it's a military term for soldiers who stood faithfully at their posts at the city gates to guard and control all who went in and out of the city. Now, most of us think of peace as this like I like to say it like this. Um, some of us think peace is passive, but I think peace is passive and aggressive, okay? It's not passive-aggressive, just passive and aggressive. Like, like the, the, the thing that Paul was thinking of was this when he thought of peace. <laughs> now, imagine, imagine if, if we thought of peace like this. Oh, they're going to guard what comes in and what comes out. So when you're getting ready to say something to Keisha, peace be like, hey, 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 easy, 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 easy. Not, not, not on a Monday, not on a Monday. We just started, okay? We got great peace. Do, do, do not disturb his own right now, okay? Do not mess with her. Like, like be easy, be easy. And it's also controlling what, what is coming in. So when all of a sudden you go, I, I, just, I, just don't, I just don't feel good enough. Peace goes, wait, 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 wait. But why, why don't you feel good enough? Who, who, who has the measuring stick here? Have you given that to somebody else? Great, great peace is great. Is, is the security guard for our emotional stability. It, help, it helps us. So all of a sudden, when, when you are tempted to do bad things with bad people, and you're just like, man, I'm just so lonely like we talked about last week. You just go, man, I just want, I, 
all of a sudden you've invited great peace to come. You go, you know what? Maybe I've been set up. Maybe this is an opportunity to grow closer to God. I know I'd rather go out with some people tonight and just have some community, but I wonder what would happen if I invited God into my apartment right now. I'm going to turn on some worship music, see what happens. Because I've got great peace on my side. You know what I could easily do? I could easily go, oh, man, I wonder if, like, I wonder if they like my sermon. Like, I wonder if they like my message. Like, I wonder, I wonder what they're thinking. And, and, and I, I just, I'm, I'm just curious. My mom was here last weekend, and uh, she was walking around with y'all going, so what did you think about that, huh? What did you think about that? What did you think? I'm like, mom, leave these people alone, okay? She's like, that's my son. That's my son. I'm like, mom, leave it alone, okay? <laughs> but what great peace does, it says, I put something in you. Just help people. Don't impress people. Help people. It's just great great peace. You, you, you're not walking around going, I, I need somebody to compliment me today. You're just going, man, I, I've got great peace about who I am and who God has, has made me to be. I, I love what, what it says in Colossians 3, uh, another church uh, that Paul wrote a letter to. He said, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And then lastly, he t- tops it off. He says, and be thankful. He says, let the peace. You got to let it happen. Let the peace of Christ rule. In other words, let the peace of Christ be the umpire. Let the peace of Christ call the shots in your life. Let the peace of Christ make the decisions, the game-changing decisions for your life. So you could easily participate in conversations where people are going, oh, our country, it's awful. Oh, my gosh. Our country is just so bad. We're going to hell in a handbasket. Oh, my gosh. What are we going to do? What country do you live? What? Listen, I love this country. Are you out of your mind? Listen, I am free and free at last. Listen, I I travel all over this country. I love every city I go to, every hotel, every 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 NBA team I go to. Listen, I love this place. Listen, when people try to talk to me about how bad the country is, I'm like, hey man, Canada is right there. I mean, it's just (laughs) anytime you like, I'm having a great time. Are you not having a great time? Listen, you want to know why I'm having a great time? I've got great peace. And I am, not, I am not looking for a politician to bring me peace for my soul. Listen, y'all do what y'all want. You live your life. But I refuse to let a news cycle disturb my peace. I, I, I refuse to let, let somebody else come and steal my joy. Nah, I'm having a good old time in the good old U.S. of A. Anytime, listen. If I go out of the country, I come back and I kiss the ground. I go straight to McDonald's. I go, I love this place. I just love it. (laughs) I love it. You ain't got to love it. But my hope and prayer is that you have great peace because the peace of Christ is calling the shots in my life. CNN don't call the shots for me. Fox News don't call the shots for me. Trump don't call. No, 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 no. The peace of Christ calls the shots in my life. Who calls the shots in yours? I mean, the question I got to ask you, this is what I want you to talk about at dinner. This is what I want you to talk about at lunch. This is what I want your conversation to be in your small groups. This is a conversation I want you to have all week long. What's in charge of your heart? Maybe a better question is, who is in charge of your heart? Who is this person that is dictating your peace? Is it a boss? Is it social media? Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to require a fight, and I I just pray that the peace of God would overwhelm your homes and overwhelm your soul. Paul is absolutely correct. There is a fight going on for your soul. There is a scheme of the devil. You might not even be a Christian. I want you to know. The devil has a plan for your life, but so does God, and it involves a whole lot of peace. I just want to give you the good news, the gospel of peace today, to know that there is a life available to you where you can put a do not disturb button, a do not disturb sign on your mind and your heart to say, you know what, I'm not going to let you take my peace. And when you have great peace, you can express your emotions in a calm manner. You can be angry, but you ain't got to yell at everybody and bang on your chest to let everybody know you mad. No, no, no. You can simply go, hey, man, I got great peace. I just want you to know, you know, the other day you said something, you did something, and, uh, man, it bothered me. And I, I just thought I'd be a mature adult. And just tell you how I feel. That's, you can do that when you, you have a core 
of great peace. You, you, you start it with, and you go, hey, man, I, I see this. Maybe I'm, I'm seeing it from uh, the wrong lens. Could you give me your perspective on that situation? Maybe you didn't intend to hurt me. Maybe you didn't intend to say that. Maybe you didn't even know that you said it. But I, I've come to you from great peace, not assuming the worst, but maybe believing the best and giving some assumptions that maybe, maybe you're not as bad as I have you in my mind. Maybe you're not my enemy. Maybe you're my friend. And, may, and again, when you walk into it going, my fight's not against them. My fight's against the devil. And I'm tired of him stealing my joy. And I'm, tired, I'm tired of him stealing my peace. So I'm going to live in the truth. And I'm going to go into my life. I'm going to go into work. I'm going to go into my home. And some of you are going to get back in your car with your spouse. But the gospel of peace. But the good news of peace. Because you've invited a Savior right to where you are. And life is going to happen. And bad things are going to happen to good people. But in that fight, my hope and prayer hope and prayer is that you wouldn't be moved because you got the gospel of peace. You got the peacemaker himself on your side. Father, I thank you so much for this amazing church. God, I pray that you, uh, man, you, that your peace would transcend all understanding. That in our homes this week, God, I just pray that there would be a crazy amount of peace in the depths of our hearts in the depths of our soul, God, I pray for peace for my friends, for people that showed up here today struggling with depression, struggling with anxiety. God, I pray that as they open Scripture this week, oh, God, I just pray that there would be an insane amount of peace that enters into their home. God, I pray that they would honor you in their home and that they would just feel peace at work, peace in their family, peace at dinner. Lord, I just, I pray, God, that they would leave knowing that they, that peace is going to be their emotional security guard. It's going to guard what goes out and what comes in. In Jesus' name we pray, everybody said, amen, amen, amen. amen.